I am a King James Bible believer, okay? Uh, and, and, and I preach in King James Bible believing churches. By the way, just for your information, uh, sometimes Bible believing churches, we get this bunker mentality, you know, it's just us. There's no one left. I was having lunch with a pastor. We were preaching in a, uh, in a joint meeting. And we're having lunch. And this is exactly, not, this is not just what he asked me. This is how he asked it. He said, well, brother, I'll let you. And you can just tell. I mean, he wanted to hear bad news. And I said, well, they're all closed. I mean, the only one's open is yours. And, you know, you're here and they're boarding it up right now. You <laughs> Let me, let me tell you what I do. My, my wife and I have been on the road. We are in our 24th year. We do not have a house. We do not have a piece of property. We are from Ohio, but that's where we're from. Uh, we just left Arkansas Wednesday night, finished preaching there, drove 370 miles that night, another 400 and some the next night, uh, so we could get back to Ohio. Went through our mail on Friday, got ready to fly up here. Uh, and, um, and we're in a different place every week. Uh, the way I do my scheduling is I do the entire country in a, well actually the world because I go out, outside the country sometimes, uh, but, I, but I, I schedule the country in a three-year circuit. Uh, I do a year and a half in the east, a year and a half in the west. When we crossed the Mississippi a couple of weeks ago, uh, or about a week ago, uh, we, we finished up uh, essentially two years in the west. Uh, now we're, sw we're switching. We're going to two and two. We'll do two years in the east, two years in the west. And every church I'm in is a King James Bible-believing church. So I want you to know that, that you're not alone. And that there are a lot of, of Bible believers, alright? But I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't get excited meeting Bible believers. I'm sorry. I have people all the time, well, I'm a Bible believer too, you know. Well, that's good. Good. I'm glad you're a Bible believer. Okay, now next. You say, well, I thought you believed the Bible. Yes, I do. But here's what I understand. I don't understand people who believe this book and don't read it. Why would you believe that God sent a book from heaven and not read the book that God sent from heaven? Are you, what do you think? You're, you're one notch more spiritual than somebody if you can say, I believe it and he doesn't? You probably, guys, you probably have a church. You could show it to me. You probably have a church in your town that preaches salvation by grace, but they use an NIV or some other modern translation. Couldn't you show me a church like that? You probably could. Uh, and I'm going I'm to guess this, that in that church, they don't read their Bible. Which doesn't bother me at all. Why would, they, why would it bother me that they don't read a book that they don't think is perfect and from God? That's the same reason I don't read the Koran. That's the same reason I don't read the, the Book of Mormon. Because I don't think it's from God and I don't think it's perfect. And if they don't believe that the Bible is perfect and from God, then why would it bother me if they don't read it? What bothers me is that there are King James Bible believers that shoot their mouths off about believing every word bless God uh, that the, in the Bible is from God, and then they don't read it. Uh, guys, that is like believing in eating steak, but not eating it. Guys, I believe in eating steak. Had one today. We call that celebrating the death of a cow. And um, could you imagine if I, if I told you I believe in eating steak, and you go, what's the, what's the last time you had a good steak? And I go, oh, uh, no, I don't eat it. Oh, I believe in eating steak. I just don't eat it. Kind of a quiche man myself. That makes me sick saying those words. Uh, next I'll be wearing a pink Angora sweater, man. I'm telling you. <clears throat> and so, guys, what I'm going to talk to you about tonight, it says here, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. You people ought to thank God that you have a church. I told you this morning that, that so, at some point your pastor said, I am not going contemporary, but you ought to thank God that you got a pastor that doesn't get up behind the pulpit and tell you where God made a mistake in his book. I was talking to a guy and he was, he was, uh, he was being dumb. I thought he was being smart, but he wasn't. Uh, and he was telling me he was some, well, someday he was going to correct, correct all the mistakes in the Bible. And I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you a question. He said, okay. I want to find out who's qualified. And that's what I said. I want to find out who's qualified. Okay. I said, have you ever lost your car keys? He said, yeah. And I said, and, and you're going to correct the Bible. That's something you can't even get that. Switch the channel, Fred. 
You lose your car keys. I mean, you lose your car keys, and you can you can correct God. I'm not sure I want somebody to lose their car keys that is going to correct the Bible. And so I'm going to talk to you tonight about why you ought to read your Bible. Uh, the first reason is this: when you when you read this book, you access something from outside a dying universe. You know, our, our solar system is dying. Did you know this? This is a scientific fact. It's not a joke. This is a scientific fact. That the sun every year is one inch, approximately one inch smaller in diameter. Because of all of the mass that it burns off. There's so much there burning. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't look smaller when you look up there. But it is actually an inch smaller. The guy asked me, he said, how did, how did they measure that? It was real easy. They set up a, a, a thing and landed and they measured it. He said, didn't it burn up? I said, no, they landed at night. <clears throat> but that's true. Do you know what a closed system is? Closed system, I can tell you. I can tell you how to make a closed system. Fill your car up. I mean, fill it up until the, the gas is literally pouring out the spout. Then put a locking gas cap on. Then take the key and throw it away. Your gas tank is now a closed system. Nothing from outside can be introduced into it. Now look, you may coast more than you ever coasted before. Shut it off at the lights, do everything else, and you may get the best mileage you ever got, but you know as well as I do, at some point it's going to run out of gas, correct? That's why it needs something from outside that system. Do you understand that every book, every book ever written, is generated from within a dying system? Your favorite author, be they lost or saved, I don't care. They're, everything that you read is generated from within in a dying system. Only when you read the Bible, here's this dying system, only when you read the Bible do you access something from outside this universe. You actually get something that was generated in heaven. And you're not going to read it? You're not going to read it? You know, if you really believed it, you, you, wouldn't, you don't read it? So guys, you need to read this because you can access, literally you're accessing the mind of God. And well, by the way, I know you know this, but I have to make this very clear to you. I did not write the Bible. I didn't write it. They said, well, I don't think you did. Well, I don't know. I think some folks think I did because when I'm, when I'm done preaching about reading the Bible, they come up and give me their lame excuse for not reading it. Uh, I, 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 I tell you this one time. He goes, uh, he goes I, I read it, and, and then I fall asleep. And he asked me what he should do. I got the end. This is the end. You ever problem falling asleep? Read it standing up. One of two things will happen. Either you'll stay awake or entertain your family. All right? Oh, I'll bet nobody here ever great this one. It's such a big fun. My response? Aren't you glad God didn't write an encyclopedia? Have you got an encyclopedia? I'm not talking about the one that's got on disc. I'm talking about 29 volumes, 30 volumes. Aren't you glad God didn't write an encyclopedia? Because that's not the, the that's the knowledge of man, and you have to get a yearbook every year. Correct? You know what I'm doing? I'm holding every word that God wants me to have in one hand. My goodness, man. Could you imagine if God wrote an encyclopedia? Your pastor would have to announce what volume he's going to preach out of next week. And then some fanatic would get an interleaf. You couldn't get two people per pew. You'd have little two-wheel dollies to bring your Bible in. And then the pastor would get up with a prayer request. Did you hear about Bill? His Bible fell on him and broke his leg. <laughs> Guys, you need to read this book because you will access something from outside the universe. You know what your problem is? Now, now look, I'm going to tell you which... I, I know this doesn't sound nice, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with your church. I'm going to tell you this. I don't know this. Your pastor hasn't told me anything. Uh, and I haven't talked to anybody. But, but if your church is like all of those other churches that I, that I preach in over the, the, uh, the uh, four-year circuit, three-year circuit, uh, I get people asking me all the time, what's wrong with our churches? Now, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with your church. You don't drink, and you don't smoke, and you're not committing adultery, and you're not taking drugs. That's what's wrong with you. You say, preacher, are you thinking we should start doing those things? No. No, I really don't. But because you're not doing those things, 
you think you're not like the people outside this world. You think, you know, that's how you personify the world. They're a bunch of drunkards and dopers and adulterers, uh, and they're all, you know, they're all doing bad things. I'm not doing any of those bad things. I'm not like them. But some of you are more interested in American Idol than in your King James Bible. Some of you are more interested in, in what's going to happen on Survivor or CSI or 24. They're going to blow the world up again. Who knows? You're, look, you are more interested in meeting a football player than you are in meeting uh, a preacher. You know, when I, was, when I was in high school, you know how you could tell a girl was dating a football player? She wore his football jersey, had his number name on it. I was in a restaurant not, not long ago, and four grown men were, getting, were going steady with Brett Favre. I am not sure he knows about that. I am not real sure he wants to. I'm telling you, I would worry, man. If I was a football player, I saw some man wearing my name on his back. And there, it's going that way. I think I'll go this way. But if you don't read this book, look, you know what you'll start doing? You'll start getting your, your thinking processes from your TV set. You'll get your philosophy from your TV set. You'll get it from some stupid lost man's novel. My goodness, guys, I'm a reader. I like to read. I read all the time, and I'll read three and four books at a time. Uh, I, I made the mistake of bringing a, a book I had started already and, and read all but one the last chapter on the plane uh, coming up here. Uh, I should have brought a thicker book. But... Um, uh, I don't understand. Some people say, I read. And I say, well, what do you read? Stephen King. Man, if you're reading Stephen King, why would you read uh, the writings of a man who claims to be demon-possessed when he writes? That's his own statement. Why do you have to read about a witch or a sorcerer? Why are you entertained by a vampire? 